Oh yeah, yo, yo. Yeah, so I don't know how y'all made it past security. Cause uh, I definitely ain't getting no call, but since it's y'all, what y'all came with? Oh, just you? Oh yeah, come on. Come through, come through, man. Welcome, man. Your boy Bow Weezy, AK, Mr. 106, AK Bow Wizzle. And right now, this is where I've been kicking that for the past year and a half during this whole crazy COVID thing, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? But this is where we've been at, man. It's the doghouse in the sky. So y'all you know, come in, I'm gonna share a couple of valuable things that mean a lot to me. And uh, we're gonna kick it off like this. So come on. Everything in my crib is a reflection of who I am. Y'all know I'm a hip hop baby. I've been rapping since diapers. So I was, you know, in Huggies and, you know, Pacifier and all that type of stuff. So, you know, hip hop means a lot to me. And if, you know, if you love hip hop like I love hip hop, then, you know, you gotta show your love for it. But that's all cool, fine, and dandy. But I heard y'all came through because y'all wanted to see some things in the crib that really mean a lot to me. So we gonna stop right here. But this right here is gonna be the first stop. Uh, the first item, of course, Fast and Furious 9. The character I play in Fast, y'all know it, Twinkie. This will mark my third appearance in a Fast film, three. Fast and Furious 9, this is the latest movie. June, summertime, we killing the box office, we killing the streaming service, can't wait. But you get this when you're filming a movie. You know, anytime you're in Hollywood, you're filming a film, usually the, the movie that you're filming, this goes on the back and then your name goes in the inside, so you know where you're sitting at. And I'm gonna be honest with you, when you shooting a movie, I know I feel some type of way when I go on set and someone sits in my shit. Like, I just feel a certain way. Like, my name is on it, that's for me, and get your ass up, you shouldn't be sitting there, so. Just to give y'all like a little insight, like some on-set etiquette, like try to sit in a director's chair with no name on it. You might be safe, or just stay your ass in the trailer. It's always good to stay in the trailer. To go along with that is this, which, means a lot to me because this right here what you're looking at with all the coffee stains and you know, sweaty uh, underwear and socks that this thing probably had to lay through in my luggage when I came back from London, England to be able to say, yo, I have an iconic uh, franchise film under my belt. It means a lot, man. It, it really does. It was just amazing how this whole thing came about. You know, even me getting into the third one, how I even got into the Fast and Furious franchise was crazy. I was on tour and we was on the Universal lot performing. I want to say me and Chris Brown tour. And I just got a call like, yo, you want Bow to, you know, come meet the director of Fast and Furious. And I thought they was playing. You know, I had a show that day and I, you know, they put me on a golf cart, drove me to the other side of Universal Studios and I met with them and told them, hey, I'm down, and ever since then, I've been down with the crew. So y'all get ready to check it out, man. I'm back in the box office. Y'all been wondering, you know, what we've been doing during the pandemic. Oh, we've been working. We've been working. You know what I mean? While y'all eating and sitting on your ass, we've been out here getting to it. You know what I mean? Getting to that bag. That's what we've been doing. All right? Bam. My fourth album, Platinum Set. I don't even put cell phones anymore. Like, this is a flip phone. Y'all got to really check this shit out. Like, this is a flip phone. Like, we, listen, if you bring out a flip phone nowadays, just don't, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do it. No one's chirping nowadays, but uh, anytime you work hard at something and, you know, since a kid, and not even since a kid, but whenever it is that you start, you want to be acknowledged. You know, you want to see accomplishments. And this is something that every artist, I don't care what genre of music you make, this is something that we all look forward to. You look forward to hanging your first plaque. You look forward to hanging many plaques on your wall. And uh, these are just all the plaques that I have here in Atlanta. I have so much stuff in LA. These are things that you want to have as an artist. And this shows that you a bad mouth. That's what this shows. It shows that you putting out music that people love, right? And uh, if ain't nobody buying your shit, then you ain't got nothing to hang. But when they buying your shit, you're gonna need about 20 walls because that's just how it is if you're doing your thing. This is my second item in the spot that means a lot to me. And the reason being is this is my first album, which makes this the first plaque, first award that I've ever received since I became a professional. Um, as you can see, not one million, not two million, triple platinum out the gate. First album, I sold three million copies. Um, I think I sold under 100K the first week, which is not good. But when you put in the work and you don't give up and you continue to do your thing and perform and you know you don't even think about the numbers a lot of times artists get caught up in the numbers 
and they can mess with you mentally. You know, for me, it's all about just putting out a great body of work and having fun with it. And this is how I approached my first album. You know, I think I went from selling like 90,000 records the first week, and then we grew to three million copies, which meant we went to work. You know, and that's hard work right there. And I was only 13 years old when I did that. And, you know, this is crazy. Even me just looking at it right now, and I look just like my daughter too. My daughter looks just like me in this middle picture right here. But uh, yeah, man, three million out the gate, man, that's tough. You know, you don't see that nowadays. Like, you just don't, you know. You might see somebody go triple platinum maybe once every two years, three years. That was just the thing back in the early 2000s. You know, records was really being sold and bought. Where now, you know, we in this age of streaming and, and, and downloading from this way of hustling to now the new age way of hustling. So we getting plaques all across the board, whether it's m movies, which you don't get plaques for, you get other things for that. But whether it's music, uh, entertaining people on my YouTube channel, dropping music constantly, uh, we went it all across the board, man. We gonna keep it that way. Now, something else that's really, really fly, I'ma show y'all. Oh yeah, y'all see the do-rags, right? I'm wearing one right now, so I can see. Get the close-up on this, because this is velvet. They gotta see this. Homies come over, and they always, Val, you got a do rag. I just got my hair braided. Yo, Val, I just got a haircut. I, I, you ain't got to ask. I got do rags set all out the crib. Just grab one, whatever one you like, grab it. If it match your outfit, if it don't, it don't. We in the house anyway. That's how I look at it. You guys got to really, like, get a load of these. Oh, I'm going to wait. I just got to follow me. Come on. I don't want y'all to see this yet. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to, you can't see all this yet. Oh, but we can make a pit stop real quick, though. So look. Remember earlier when y'all walked in, I told y'all hip hop is me. I'm hip hop, hip hop means a lot to me, the culture. And this right here is a photo that you probably will never see ever and you won't probably see it nowhere. And you know who this is. This is a young Snoop, this is my aunt, the legend, the icon Snoop Dogg, my, my, my favorite rapper of all time. I'm biased, I know he discovered me, so. But just count my blessings. If it wasn't for this man, I wouldn't even be here talking to you guys right now. If it wasn't for this man, I wouldn't be showing you guys all these plaques. Um, I mean, I got something to do with it too, but this is the man who gave me my name. This is the man who allowed me to go on the Arsenio Hall show. He brought me with him and he didn't allow me to go on stage. I, I took that, I took that. My mama said, like, get your ass out there. Now's the time, now's the time. And uh, that's what I did. I took the mic and went out there and, you know, Suge, everybody was just going crazy. You know, I was a death row baby. This is where it all started at right here. This is the man that found me. I believe Unk might have been, he might be like 19 years old in this pic. But when I showed him this pic on FaceTime, he was like, man, nephew, I need that one. So right now, we'll take a, take a walk to the black hole. You know what I mean? Call this the black hole right here. Upon your interest, the first thing that's gonna slap you in your face is these things that I earned from a lot of hard work. As you can see, my YouTube awards right here. Passing uh, 100,000 subscribers, you know what I'm saying? You get the silver joint when you pass 100. And then when you pass a million, then you get the big boy, you know what I mean? For passing a million subscribers, they seen the big gold joint. So this means a lot to me because, you know, no label help. Uh, at the time, no management, no nothing. This was strictly my idea. I'm like, damn, man, how can I really tap into my fans? You know, once the whole social media thing really got, that became the thing and the way to hustle, I had to jump on board with it, you know what I mean? It's, it's all about, we're standing the time and you gotta move with the current things and uh, that's how I did it. So these two awards right here mean so much to me because this was all self-earned and self-hard work and me just doing this thing on my own and coming up with my own content with no help, no content creators, no none of that. This right here means a lot to me as well. This is the official invitation to his Imagine This grand opening of his film studio here in Atlanta. Y'all, everybody saw how iconic that was. And I will never, ever in life get rid of this because this is a one of one. Only a handful of people have this. It was a very special night. We were all together under one roof. And that was also the night that I made my son. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> uh, this means a lot to me, too, because, you know, such and such a magazine, Jamie, you know, Foster Brown means so much to me and has always been there for the beginning of my career. And she actually uh, presented me with this award. November 5th, 2001, so that's over 20 years ago when we did that. That's crazy. 2001, I sound like I'm 65 years old. Uh, Y'all all know how I feel about kids. World's Children's Day at McDonald's. I'm always doing things, you know, trying my best to give back. Uh, and like I said, I'm a father of two now, so I feel like it's my responsibility to step up and start, you know, leading that, uh, you know, getting involved with things. And I've been involved in the community for quite some time. That's big right there. I, you know, my National Stop the Violence Entertainer of the Year Award, 
That means a lot to me. I don't really rock with violence like that. I'm a cool cat. I like to get money. I like to chill with my boys, take trips, have fun, enjoy life. Life is meant to be lived. Life is meant to be, you know, full of happiness and laughter. And I feel like that's some of the best exercise you can give somebody. And that's how I live mine. Anyway, I got some things that I would like to show you guys that really mean a lot to me. Now, out of everything in the crib, I must say, y'all done seen the plaques. It means a lot. It's cool, right? It's cool. You've seen the awards. That's cool. That's cool, man. I showed you some photography, some, some classic hip-hop iconic pieces I got in the condo. That's, that's cool, right? Nothing's cooler than this. You got to get a load of this. You know what I'm saying? See, this is the no-fly zone right here. You know what I mean? You got to be daddy to cross this. It's, the, it's like the grown folks section slash dad section. And the reason why is because all of these toys belong to my son. Or when we watching basketball, he sits here with his basketball hoop, dunking the ball and watching the game. So when it comes to this, he goes crazy. Like if I put the ball in his hand and say slam dunk, he'll do it. Like he knows what slam dunk means. Of course, man, y'all know how I am about being a dad. And of course, having my first son, like words can't even describe the feeling. And I get that with my daughter too. You know, my Shy Shy is my everything, y'all know that. From all the viral videos, you gotta see how our relationship is and, and how we vibe and, you know, and stuff like this she used to want, but now it's all about iPads and nails and makeup and all the girly stuff. All of that stuff just brings joy to me. It just makes me a better person, a better artist, a better actor, a better everything. You know, once home is solidified and taken care of, you can go outside and perform at your best. And I think that's for anybody. And I will say this, my home is taken care of. You ain't got to worry about that. Behind my back, I've been trying to hide them. I know you guys probably saw something, but when you asked me to show you items in my crib that mean the most to me, nothing can out top these. Damn. These are not the official shoes that I wore in the movie, but these are the exact model that I wore in the Like Mike movie. The shoe that I wore in Like Mike was the Nike Blazer. You know what I'm saying? The Blazer has been around before our time. This is actually me paying homage to my movie Like Mike. And also, Like Mike was my first big film, me playing the lead at 14 years old. That was crazy. So once I hit triple platinum, I just took the world by storm and I just started getting offers from everybody, from everywhere. I had this shoe made, actually. Uh, BW Apparel, my line, as y'all see, I'm rocking that right now. The vintage little Bow Wow tee. Uh, right before COVID hit, before all of that, I was, you know, chilling with my designers and my, my apparel, and I said, yo, I think this would be lit. I want to pay homage to the Like Mike movie. I want some blazers customly made for me. And uh, what they did was they did exactly that. Man, you've never seen work on a shoe like this. Uh, you see it says Knights, my number three. It says Cambridge all through the shoe. Of course, my logo on the back, the BW logo. You see that all over the merch. If you're online, bwapparel.com. Make sure you log on and go get you some. I only wore them once. And you can see that's from Madison Square Garden. That's from the stage. So these are worn. Yes, these are actually mine. And I even put the MJ in the tongue like I do in the movie. You know, when I, when I discovered that these were Michael Jordan shoes, when I go, MJ. Yeah, so we got the MJ in the tongue, so these is for real, for real. But I wore them once, wore them in New York. I saved them for that show because, you know, every concert I've ever done at MSG, it just means a lot. So I wanted that night to feel special because it was a special night, and I brought out the white mics for that one show. And I was never, ever going to wear these again. I have decided because my heart is so kind. I'm gonna let these things go, and I... Oh, man. Without further ado, I want to go ahead and actually donate my one-on-one -on -one custom Like Mike worn shoes that I wore on stage at Madison Square Garden uh, to the Boys and Girls Club. And the reason for that being is because I have been embedded uh, with the Boys and Girls Club for years, for years. I've done so many things with them uh, throughout my career and um, hopefully these shoes can inspire uh, the kids there and you know want them and, and hopefully it encourages them to go chase their goals and dreams and know that anything is possible that's what these shoes mean to me i'm passing those things on down to you guys and without further ado i am gone and uh, i'm gonna make sure i sign these two for y'all all right thank you god bless <laughs>